Collecting plastic waste in rivers and the ocean is a fantastic thing to do, but it's only a small part of the problem. Team Seas is a fundraising project organised by YouTubers which aims to remove £30 million of plastic and trash from rivers and the ocean. But the crazy thing is, globally we release twice that amount every single day. Now I'm not saying Team Seas is a bad idea at all. That'll be £30 million, or 13.6 thousand tonnes of plastic and garbage that would otherwise be polluting the environment, and removing it is fantastic. But we have to put this in perspective with the estimated 10 million tonnes of plastic released each year. And the fact that removing £30 million of plastic and garbage is going to cost $30 million gives us an idea of the scale of the problem. By this count, we'd need to spend $60 million per day just to deal with plastic waste in rivers and the ocean. Who should pay for this? It shouldn't be you. It should be the plastic companies who produce the plastic in the first place. And they have the money. They're a $580 billion industry. But they don't have to worry about any of the environmental consequences. They're happy for the environment to be destroyed as long as they make lots of money. Now one worry I have about Team like TeamSeas is if we're paying for the plastic cleanup, it lets these plastic companies carry on business as usual. And collecting trash is really just moving trash. Where does it go? Well, either to landfill, where over time it breaks down into microplastics and unfortunately can end up leaching back out into the water system anyway, or it gets burned, which is obviously bad for the environment. So the real problem here is all the trash we create in the first place. So what should we do about it? Well, here are five practical things we can do to reduce plastic pollution. Number one, regulate. Plastic pollution is a big social political problem that's too big for any single individual to solve. Governments need to regulate plastic production and make companies pay for the environmental damage they cause. Plastic companies will carry on their harmful practices as long as governments stand by. Now, the best thing you can do is to vote for people who are strong on the environment and let your local representative know that your vote depends on their actions on the environment and then hold them to account. We need increased fees and taxes on the production of plastics to make the plastic producing companies pay for the environmental costs and implement a total ban on single-use plastics. Also, we can stop subsidising the oil plastics are made from, which is $20 billion a year of your money in the US, or $500 billion a year globally. Number two, reduce our plastic dependency. Today, the average person in the world uses 95 pounds, or 43 kilograms, of plastic per year. But people in the US average at 231 pounds, and people in the UK 218 pounds. So if, say, you donate $10 to Team Seas, this corresponds to £10 of plastic removed, which is only about 4% of your yearly plastic usage if you're the average person. So a great thing to do is to try and reduce our own plastic use. But we can't blame ourselves too much. Plastic is everywhere and it's hard to avoid. But wherever possible, we should avoid and refuse single-use plastics. The less plastic we use, the less plastic is wasted, and the less plastic will need to be produced in the first place. And you can reuse a lot of plastic yourself. Next time you get a plastic fork from the takeout, wash it and keep it in your bag, and you can reuse it over and over again. You can bring your own bags to do shopping, and bring a stainless steel water bottle rather than buying drinks in disposable bottles, and as an added bonus, you'll also avoid the bad health impacts from drinking microplastics, which are known to leach off plastic bottles. Also, there are more and more plastic-free grocery stores and refill shops popping up, where you can bring your own empty plastic containers and get them refilled. So why not see if there's one in your area? Reusing plastic is much better than recycling. Which brings us to number three, don't think recycling is the answer. These aren't recycling symbols. These are symbols made by plastic companies to make us think they're recycling symbols. They're actually symbols to say what kind of plastic this is, and most of these numbers are not actually recyclable. Recycling was a crafty way for the big plastic producers to make us feel guilty about plastic use and distract us from the fact that they're actually the people actually causing the problem. Only 10% of plastic has ever been recycled, and then mostly it can only be recycled once. What's the solution? Well, keep on recycling because it's still better than nothing. But again, the best thing is to not use single-use plastics in the first place. 
Number four, educate ourselves. The best thing we can do is educate ourselves as much as possible. I've recently learned that a great way for the world to stop plastics from ending up in the ocean is to improve waste management where the problem is the greatest. 90% of ocean plastic comes from just 10 rivers. These are places that don't have the infrastructure to deal with the plastic waste. So globally, we need to invest in waste management in these areas to collect plastic before it even reaches the rivers and oceans. And we just need a plan. International agreements with firm targets and timeframes for reducing plastics and cleanup, just like we do for carbon emissions. Really, this is the only way the problem will properly be solved. 5. Cleanup Finally, we can actively help solve the problem ourselves. A lot of the plastic in the ocean ends up getting washed up on the shorelines. So the next time you go to a beach, bring a bag to collect any rubbish you find. Joining a local shoreline cleanup is another great way to feel good about actively making things better. But like I've said, the problem is way bigger than anything we can solve on our own. Globally, there needs to be increased funds for cleanup operations where the problem is greatest. Again, this relies on governments to work together to establish a global ocean fund with waste management and cleanup of marine areas high on the agenda. This is where Team Seas will help. Half the money will go to the Ocean Conservancy and their international coastal cleanup, which both have excellent track records of work. And the other half of the money will go to the Ocean Cleanup, which I think it's fair to say has a pretty poor track record to date. But apparently things will be different this time. I don't know. It's a bit of a question mark still for me, to be honest, but I'd recommend you doing your own research to see what you think. So if you'd like to donate, you can donate to Team Seas, or if you'd like to choose exactly where your money is going, you can also donate directly to the Ocean Conservancy, and another great option is River Cleanup. Or if you want to focus on the protection of marine life, Oceana is a fantastic choice, as well as the World Wildlife Fund. Links to all of these are in the description below. I love the oceans and all the amazing creatures that live there, so much so that me and a friend made a whole book about them. And I think it's great this movement is raising awareness of plastic pollution. And although, as we've seen, there are many significant problems to solve, ocean plastics is a solvable problem. According to research, we have the solutions today that could reduce the flow of plastics into the oceans by 80% by 2040 and a lot more cost-effectively than the $60 million per day figure I mentioned earlier. We just need governments, corporations, and investors to back these plans. But on a personal note, the best things you can do are to stay educated, put pressure on your local government officials, and do whatever it takes to make sure the plastic-producing companies make as little money from you as possible by refusing to use single-use plastics.